So usually we deal with um, electric flux for closed surfaces. So we're going to do one example here where we have a closed surface. We're going to figure out the electric flux total for a shape that looks like this. This is where it gets really fun because I get to draw in three dimensions. There it is. We are going to, to define the uh, five sides of this. Uh, we have different lengths. Let's see. We have uh, this. Well, actually, I'll do, do the lengths here. If I just look at one side, this side is defined the length as A. This side is B. This side is C. And it has a width W. And there is an electric field, a constant electric field, which passes through this closed surface, which looks like this. If I draw it in this picture, it would look like this, the electric field. <coughs> and we have a bunch of sides. So this, uh, the, the back side right here, I'm going to label as side one. Uh, the left-hand side, I'm going to label as 3. And we're also going to label a side here. I'm going to stop using side for all of them. This is the back. These are the two sides, 3 and 4. The back is 1. The bottom, I'm going to call 5. And this um, side that's along the, the piece that's the hypotenuse is going to be 2. What, we need, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the electric flux that passes through all five of these sides and add them up. So first off, the electric flux that passes through piece five. Again, Ea cosine theta. Ea cosine theta, side five which is the bottom, which would be this piece right here. Ea times the cosine of what angle? Catherine. Or the bottom here. Um, zero, zero. 90. 90 degrees, because A5 area vector 5 would go down like that. So that would be 90 degrees. So the electric flux that passes through side 5 is 0. If you look at it, think about it as a number of electric field lines that pass through the surface, that ends up being 0. The electric flux that passes through <coughs> 3 and the electric flux that passes through 4 end up being the same as well. Ea times a cosine of what is now, the area vector is always out from the box. That's why this area went down and not up. So it's always out. So what is the direction of the area vector for side five? Please point. Let's see how you can do on this. Side five, which is the bottom. Okay, it's down. Okay. Side three, which is this end on this side, okay, is going to be out of the board. So what's the angle then, Clint? 90. Side four, which is the back, what's the direction? Forward relative to you. Again, that's also 90. So notice that the electric flux that passes through three, four, and five are all zero. Why are they going out of the board? Uh, this side three is out of the board because 90 degrees to this plane is either out or into the board, oh, right? And it, because it's always out of the box for side three, it's out of the board for side four, it would be into the board. Regardless, it's a cosine of 90. Left. What about side five? Side five is the bottom, right? So that one would be down, down in this picture, which again is still 90 degrees from the electric field. Let's next do the electric field, or electric flux for side one, which is the back. So again, we have E times A times a cosine of what angle? So point 
in the direction of the area vector for this side, the back side, please. It's going to be that direction. So what is then class the angle? 180 degrees. The electric field's to the right. The area vector for side one <coughs> is that direction, so it's going to be 180 degrees. So we have negative E times the area. What is the area of the back side? A times W. A times W. Length times width. A times W. So we have now the electric flux through one is E negative E A W. The electric flux that passes through side, what did I label it? Side two. Again, E A cosine theta. Now, we need to understand the angle here. Okay, point in the direction in this picture of the area vector for side C, or for side two. I agree, it's going to be this direction. Which means this is our angle theta right there. So if we look at the picture, the picture looks like this, where this is, um, We'll call this one alpha, this one beta. This is the direction of the area vector for two. This is the direction of the electric field. This is theta. So we need to find theta. Well, Okay, if this is 90 degrees, that makes this beta, correct? This makes this 90 degrees. That makes theta equal to alpha, right? Because alpha plus 90 plus beta adds up to 180 degrees. 180 degrees adds up to beta plus 90 plus theta. That makes theta equal to alpha. So here we get the electric field multiplied by the area. What is the area of um, this sign two, please? Tuck. Uh, C, W. C times W times a cosine of what we've labeled alpha. So the electric flux that passes through two is equal to E times C times W. Now the cosine of alpha. Cosine of alpha is equal to, well, that's equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is A over C, which is equal to E times A times W. In other words, the total <coughs> flux passing through the whole thing equals negative E A W plus E A W, which equals zero. In other words, the net flux that passes through a closed surface that has no charge inside it adds up to zero, always. <laughs>